Chapter 8 Paget checked her watch another time. She was being stood up. Or maybe he'd been hit by the proverbial bus. He'd better be in critical, having a broken leg or something. It was nearly four in the afternoon. There was no way they were going to have time to get him a suit now. They might not even be able to make it in time for dinner. Fashionably late was one thing. Late late was another with Paget's mother. She had known this was a bad idea. Love her? Ha! He couldn't even be on time. Finally, Paget grabbed her suitcase and locked the apartment door behind her. Lugging it down the stairs, she managed to bruise the back of her legs with the silly thing. It felt like she had packed bricks instead of a few necessities. That's one thing she missed about having a man or money in life. Before now, Paget had always had someone else to handle the bills, the arrangements, the suitcases. It was a lot easier. A businessman was getting out of a cab and asking it to stay. She made a bee line for it. Perhaps she could bribe the cabbie to leave the guy behind and take her fare instead. With what money, her brain asked. Okay, so she would have him call another cab on his radio thingy. It would be the quickest she could get one. Hey, taxi! Paget skidded to a halt, and once again the rolling suitcase banged into the back of her legs, causing her to stumble. With a grin, the guy she had mistaken for a businessman gently grabbed her elbows to help keep her upright. Paget simply couldn't believe it. Shiny black loafers, dress pants, belt, tucked in iron dress shirt, tie, shaved, hair freshly cut, showered, and what was that? Cologne? It had to have some sort of pheromones in it. It smelled that deliciously male on him. Her lips parted in a breathless word. Max? So I clean up okay, all right? There was definitely some satisfaction in that non-question. Sorry I'm a little late. We got caught in traffic. A water main broke on Wellington. You look gorgeous. Something new with the hair? Highlights. Her voice came out breathy. A fortune in dye and styling. Who was this guy in front of her, and how did he afford this? Unless Paget was mistaken, he was wearing Brooks Brothers. Gary was enough of a suit snob that she was sure it was Brooks Brothers. While it wouldn't be the most expensive at the wedding, it certainly wouldn't be the least expensive. His suit had to cost more than her three dresses put together. Your curls are gone. Will you miss them? He gave a roguish grin. With the shave, you don't look like you. Paget's voice was coming out in confused chatter. It did that sometimes when her brain had yet to catch up and absorb what was happening. Like her tongue needed to fill the space where her brain should operate. You're handsome. I mean, you always were, but now it's just not you. Max grinned and put Paget's suitcase into the trunk of the taxi. I promise you I'm still me. So, do you think I'll pass muster for the wedding? I have a suit jacket. Oh, you'll definitely do, said Paget. Suddenly, she felt a little shy. Here was comfortable, flirty Max, changed into this confident, soft male who could walk off the cover of GQ without a backward glance. Paget had one of those, and her husband had been stupidly in love with one of those before, and look where it had ended. She wasn't sure what to do about this new side of Max that she was seeing. He looked amazing. He opened the door and gestured for her to enter the taxi. Paget shook herself mentally out of her drooling and quickly got into the cab with nerves like she was going on her first date, which she certainly wasn't, she reminded herself sternly. Max got in and took her hand in his. It was both comforting and uncomfortable at the same time. Here he was, the same sounding happy man that she knew, but yet a stranger with a whole new identity. Tell me about your family. What should I know before we get there? Paget let him know about her mother, the control freak who loved everything perfect in her society life. She talked about her laid-back, often confused father who was an upstanding member of the country club board and somehow a partner in the law firm. Tiffany, her perfect older sister, who had married Charles, a lawyer from Dad's firm, and had three perfect children, the last of which, Tricia, was getting married to her fiancé Jordan, son and heir of one of the older fortunes in the world. Money meets money and class. As she chattered on, Paget felt herself relax. He was such a good listener, and asked all the right questions. For a moment she found comfortable Max back. Somewhere in warning him that Aunt Lucille was a drunk with an eye for good-looking guys, Paget realized they were going the wrong way. 
Did you give him the right address? I hope you didn't mind, but I thought you might want to arrive in a bit more style than a cab. I have a friend who owes me a favor, and he has a sports car, so I asked if we could borrow it. Really? Friends with sports cars now. She wondered who this new Max was. Max smiled. It's just up here. Selection is limited, but you can choose whatever make and model he has. The taxi pulled up to a stunning house with a large garage attached. A man stepped lightly down some stone steps to meet them. He was handsome and dark blonde, golf and country way, except for the glasses he wore. Paget wondered if he preferred them or if he wasn't a candidate for laser eye surgery. Max helped Paget out of the car, the cabbie taking out their bags. Hey, Dill. Thanks for helping us out like this. Max had the country club man shook hands. This is Paget. The lovely Paget. Good to meet you. Dylan firmly shook Paget's hand with a broad smile. Shannon's out right now, but uh, maybe when you return the car you can see her again. That'd be great, Max replied. Paget recalled what Max had confided in her about Shannon being ill from that drug and the fun that he was using to help other children with the same issue. So, here are the cars. Take your pick. Dylan clicked a remote in his hand and the garage doors opened to reveal a collection of twelve vehicles. All were glossy and in perfect condition. Some were classics, while a few were brand new toys. Paget, She looked at Max. You want me to choose? It's your party, Dylan grinned. Hey, Max, you did keep up your license, right? I promise you, I remember how to drive. Max shook his head. I do have a company truck now, you know. I have insurance. All is good. Dylan explained the inside joke. I run an insurance firm. Max snorted. Your daddy owns the insurance firm. Dylan immediately held up a hand, and Paget could see this was an old, running, friendly argument between the two men. Daddy may have owned it, but I manage it. Believe me, if I didn't do it well, he'd fire me right away. How is the old man anyway? Max asked. Eh, still king of his piece of the world, and showing no signs of slowing down. I'll tell him you said hi. Dylan got a little more serious as he watched Max pay for the cab. The offer still stands if you get tired of the job you're working at. Thanks, Dylan, but no thanks. I'm good where I am right now. Max flashed a smile, but it was a little tight. Paget wondered if she should offer to pay for the cab, but she didn't want a chance insulting Max in front of his friend. Uh, how about the blue one? Paget asked at random, trying to cover up the tension between the two men. Nothing gets men on the same page like discussing cars. The Ferrari F60 America. Dylan had a slight wince. Max rolled his eyes. You haven't driven it yet, have you? Well, no, it's, it's fine. It's in good hands. If you don't want us to take it out, we can choose another. Look, Paget anxiously watched the cab leave. We're happy to take whatever car you are willing to give us. I just need to get there. Nope, a deal is a deal. Dylan went to a small box on the wall, full of keys, and tossed a set to Max. Have fun, but no dents. Thanks, Dad, Max teased. Within moments, they had the suitcases in the Ferrari and said their thanks to Dylan before zipping along the highway. Paget waited a bit before asking, So how do you know Dylan? Old friends. His brother and I went to college together. Dylan had a habit of trailing us around. Plus, he's amazing at scuba diving. We used to go see shipwrecks in the Caribbean together. Paget didn't see how Dylan could be anything but Ivy League. His very nature said that he would be comfortable in the world which she had grown up in. This meant that Max would have to have come from a very prestigious background. The Max she knew had been more of a blue-collar Max. This Max, the Max of Brooks Brothers suits, driving a Ferrari, looking all male and GQ. She could see him going to an Ivy school. It was hard to reconcile the two different sides of Max, and now Paget wondered what she really knew about him. Barely on time, they arrived at Tiffany's sprawling house. For the weekend, she'd hired a valet service and had the help going in full force. Someone was there to take the bags, and Tiffany met them in the foyer, effusing good cheer as she hugged Paget. Paget, don't you look lovely? I'd let you go freshen up, but dinner's about to be served, and you know how Mother gets. A couple of minutes in the bathroom, and I'll be good, Paget said. Perfect. Tiffany turned a thousand-watt smile on Max. This must be Max. Mother told me a little bit about you, but she didn't mention how handsome you are. As she enveloped Max into a hug, she gave Paget a look that clearly said they were going to have to talk later.
Now, unless you need the little boy's room, you just come right this way, and I'll introduce you to my husband, Charles. Charles works at Hewlett's, George, and Stillman's. He's a senior partner. Tiffany kept chapping up a storm of social nonsense, and Paget quickly made her way to the washroom. A pad of the hair and a reapplication of mascara and gloss were the best she could do under the circumstances. Thank goodness she had put on her first dress selection for the weekend before leaving the apartment, since there was no time to change now. Fortunately, the fabric was forgiving and hadn't wrinkled on the drive over. Paget made her way to the dining room and was greeted by Tricia and Jordan, a happy couple to be. "'Jordan, do you remember my Aunt Paget? She now lives in—' She cocked her head. "'What neighborhood was it?' Her tone indicated that it was one that she was sure not to know, since no one of her social status would ever go there. Paget supplied the name of her neighborhood, Riley, fully expecting Tricia to put it down in a disdainful manner. "'That's right, and you're going to college as well!' Tricia made it sound like Paget was a bright child for supplying the right answer. Jordan held out his hand, and she shook it in greeting. "'Always nice to see you again, Aunt Paget. We're so glad you could come.' "'Thank you,' Paget's eye caught Tiffany's. If you'll excuse me. As she made her way to Tiffany, Paget could hear Tricia explain to Jordan, Grandmother says she's going through a midlife crisis. If I ever get that way when we're old, put me in therapy or something. Paget winced. She knew her life choices weren't going over exactly well with her family, but for her mom to put it down to midlife crisis? Paget definitely wasn't that old. Tiffany grabbed her arm and blathered something about needing Paget's opinion on cheese balls before dragging her into the kitchen while the catering staff was busy working on the evening's menu. She turned on Paget in astonishing speed. First of all, how dare you say he was homeless to Mother and I? He's obviously not. You gave her a week of worry and I had to put up with it. I don't have time for that since we're hosting all of this, and I've been working myself to the bone trying to make it perfect for Tricia. Tiffany? "'When is the last time I lied to you?' Paget asked sweetly. "'That time you said Gary was the best man that you'd ever met, "'and he couldn't possibly humping his secretary, "'to which I replied Gary was like any other man "'with a twenty-year-old gorgeous and underqualified secretary. "'Screwing her?' Tiffany replied with some venom. "'Besides that,' Paget furiously whispered. "'There was no need to bring up how stupid she had been. "'I don't know, but there's no way that Maxwell Ramsley is homeless.' Tiffany rearranged an oared to Irv's tray, perfecting what was already perfect. Who? Paget asked, stunned. Maxwell Ramsley was huge. The Ramsley family was up socially from the Forrester family. It was rich. They had estates and vacation homes. They had a private jet. They owned so many businesses, pharmaceuticals, insurance, hospitals, and more. Maxwell Ramsley had been on the cover of GQ. Paget knew it because Gary had complained bitterly about it. Suddenly, she knew why Max had looked so familiar. Maxwell Ramsley. Of the Ramsleys, Tiffany rolled her eyes. It was very funny of you to say that he was homeless. How did you manage to snag one of America's most eligible bachelors? Paget realized that Tiffany was jealous of her. For the first time ever, she had something that was considered better than what Tiffany had. Yet she didn't know how she felt about Max any more. He lied to her. At the very least, he'd omitted his entire identity. Paget's stomach turned sour. I had no idea. Seriously, scoffed Tiffany. Their mother opened the door and hissed around it. Tiffany, this is the mark of a poor hostess to make her guests come to the kitchen. It's ten past and dinner should be served before it gets overdone. Neither Tiffany nor Paget commented on the fact that their mother was calling herself a guest in her daughter's home. Mother never frequented the kitchen as she found it beneath her. Both daughters hurried out to the dining room to do the polite, and Paget found herself seated between Max and Earl Milton. Earl wasn't a bad guy. He came from a good family, with old oil money. He was a friendly, nice guy who always tried a little too hard. He still carried his baby fat, and it started a nice comb-over in deference to his balding plate. Everyone liked Earl in a family pet sort of way. His mother managed his life nicely, and some day, when she snagged a wife for him, Paget was sure the wife would manage his life nicely as long as she could manage Mrs. Milton as well. 
Mrs. Milton and Paget's mother were good-standing friends, which meant they shared a polite social call at each other's homes every month, where they commented on the cheesecake, discussed the latest diet fads, and dished the gossip while lamenting or praising their offspring's achievements as the moment required. It was the reason her mother had been promoting Earl to Paget. Paget looked around, and the table was a little off. Mentally, she gave a quick tally. One more male than female. The numbers weren't even, which meant they hadn't expected her to bring Max, which meant Earl was a setup. They were hoping that she would be the next Mrs. Milton. Considering her circumstances and his limited mental scope, they probably thought it was a fair trade. Paget made polite conversation with Earl, who, to give him credit, was interested in her schooling and attempt at running for mayor. He offered to be a sponsor, which she accepted since she would desperately need cash for the campaign, and there was no way she was going to ask anyone else here for donations. Although politics was long known to be an acceptable thing to do, Paget somehow suspected when it came to her they would think it was a quaint that she was trying her hand at the political arena and then firmly ignore her. After all, what did a former housewife know about politics? Paget turned to Max and sweetly greeted him. "'Are you enjoying your dinner, Mr. Ramsley?' Max winced. "'We should talk about that.' "'Wrong tense. We should have talked about that.' Paget took yet another large sip of wine. How she had missed the good stuff. All she had done was push food around her plate and drink the wine. She had the feeling she might be sloppy drunk before the night was through. Good. It would make it easier to deal with her mother. I didn't want to say anything because I knew you might treat me differently, Max whispered near her ear. Paget gave him a cool look and a little sarcasm. Really? You think I might have treated you differently? Why might you have thought that? All right, we need to talk. Max took the wine out of her hand, forestalling her next large sip, and pulled Paget to her feet. He kept her hand firmly in his and another on her back, pushing her along the huge dining room table headed for the hall. Excuse us. Part of Paget wanted to make a scene right there in the dining room, but she knew it wasn't done. Her mother would be angry, and she had no right to embarrass Tiffany at her party. Besides, Paget did want to have this out. Anger was simmering, and she wasn't a redhead for nothing. Paget and Max ended up in Charles's study, where she jerked her hand out from his and slammed the door closed. Her voice was seething as she threw her hands up in the air. "'Treated you differently? Why would you think that? You're a Ramsley, one of the most prestigious families. Your family owns pharmaceuticals and insurance. Your family could buy my family without a blink. You've gone to Harvard. You've done extreme sporting as your Hosby. You've been on the cover of GQ. You dated a different girl every week. Why would I treat you differently? Why would anyone?' "'I'm not that person any more.' Max ran a hand through his hair in frustration, but it didn't have the same effect on his shorn locks. I've changed. Really? Why on earth are you posing as a homeless person? Was it a big joke? Who does that? Paget hugged herself, angry and hurt. Hanging out with Adam and his friends? What was that? It's not a joke. Max took a deep breath and lowered his voice. It's not a joke. I am homeless, and I like Adam and his friends. They're a lot of fun. You, homeless, one of the Ramsley. Paget snorted. Even Tiffany told me I was stupid for believing that one. It's true, he insisted. It's a long story, but you need to believe me. I haven't lied to you. I don't know what to believe. I don't know anything about you. Paget ignored the stricken look on Max's face and headed for the door. Let's just get through the weekend. Do you want me to leave? Max asked. Paget paused at the door leaning her head against the wood as her hand rested on the knob. Her heart twisted her chest and she remembered all of the outrageous stories he told the kids at the bar and the advice he gave them. She remembered all the times he walked her home and flirted with her, telling her about the stars in that book of his. Paget remembered his kindness to the homeless people like Ed, always making sure he had something to eat. She remembered amazing kisses and touches and looks. She wondered if it had been real or not. Her heart throbbed, and she knew that he had found his way in there somehow. She was in love with this big oaf, and she didn't know who he was any more. Paget wanted the Max that she had been championing, not this man who could easily have championed himself. 
he turned her whole world upside down in so many ways. Paget. Max slowly placed a hand on her shoulder and then turned around to face him, his other hand cupping her cheek. I'll do whatever you want. Paget looked at him miserably. You lied to me. No, I just didn't tell you everything. My husband had a habit of not telling me everything. He didn't tell me about the three or four pieces on the side that he had. Those are the ones that I know about. There might have been more. He didn't tell me that he had no intention of having children. He didn't tell me how bad our finances were. He didn't tell me a lot of things, Paget said sadly. She couldn't help that a tear had found its way out and was going down her cheek. I can't do that again. Then you won't. Max pulled her into his arms, and even though her heart felt like it was breaking, it also felt like it was coming home. Paget just wanted to hold on for a few more minutes and pretend that the last hour hadn't happened. But pretending and ignoring had gotten her bad place before. Paget wiped her eyes and resolutely pulled back. Max gave her his handkerchief and tried to explain. I was born Maxwell Arthur Ramsley, youngest son of David and Rachel Ramsley. I had a blessed childhood with two older brothers, no sisters. I went to Harvard. I enjoyed some good adventures and did some dangerous stunts with my friends at the time. Then I followed my father's footsteps in the family business like he wanted, like all of us Ramsleys are expected to do. My father, David, is the one who owns Ramsley Pharmaceuticals. He's the one who covered everything up with the diabetic drug I was telling you about. Because I refuse to back down, he doesn't talk to me anymore. Neither does my brother Michael. The only one I have any contact with is Noah. I haven't felt like a Ramsley for the past four years, Paget. I don't like using my last name because people expect things from a Ramsley. I'm just a guy who works for a demolition company. I don't want to be judged by my last name anymore. Max ran a hand through his hair, frustrated. I was going to tell you. You were going to tell me, Paget repeated angrily. It seems like you're going to tell me a lot of things, but you never get around to it. What would you have said if I had told you? Max asked. I don't know, Paget exploded. We'll never know, because once again, you didn't tell me. I had to hear it from other people. It makes me feel foolish, like I don't know who you really are. I'm Max. The guy who loves you, Max said a little desperately. That's who I am. Really? Because people who love people don't keep secrets from each other. I don't have any secrets from you, Paget waved her hands around. I don't want to be in a relationship where the truth is being kept from me. I did that already with Gary. It's not fair to me. You're right. Max tried to grab her hand, but she pulled it away. I promise there are no other surprises about me. I'll make sure to tell you absolutely everything about me. It's too late, Max, Paget sighed, the fight going out of her. Let's just get through this weekend. I'd like to keep up appearances in front of my family for the wedding. What about after the wedding? Max asked softly. I don't know, she said tiredly. I'm going to go wash up and redo my makeup. You should go back to dinner. Paget, Max protested, but she waved his words away and left him. In the bathroom, Paget looked at the mirror and reflected on what a fool she had been. She was in love with a chronic liar. Well, maybe liar was too strong of a word, but certainly with a man who withheld the truth when he thought it was convenient to him. She sighed over her aching heart and then washed her blotchy face. Fortunately, she still had some of her good quality makeup left. It was supposed to have gotten her through the wedding, but it was more important to cover up her mottled face right now. She'd go back to department store makeup tomorrow, since it would be all that she had left. A few extra flicks of the mascara wand, and she was ready to go, but she still lingered. Her mother was going to pitch a fit when she found out it was Max Ramsley who was Paget's date. She would think that Paget had played a joke on her, making her think he was homeless. Tiffany already thought that. They would both be angry at her, and it would just make the weekend a lot harder. Paget supposed she'd have to weather their disapproval. It wasn't like they accepted any of her life choices anyway. Mother would be demanding some sort of explanation over the course of the weekend. Paget wondered what she could say to smooth things over. Then suddenly she decided she didn't want to smooth things over. Paget straightened her shoulders and blew out a breath. She could handle her mother. Sort of. With some wine for fortitude. She could handle Max, too. She was just going to pretty much ignore him throughout most of the weekend. 
It didn't take long to find out that the group was on dessert by the time Paget re-entered the dining room. That was fine. She was ready for something sweet and soothing to calm her nerves. It helped that her wine glass had been refilled. Max helped her into a chair. Paget allowed it because she was choosing not to create a scene. Like she had told Max earlier, she simply wanted to get through the weekend. Everyone pretended not to be curious as to why she and Max had left in such a hurry. Mother sent her a silent glare sheathed in a perfect smile that Paget knew so well. She'd be hearing about this whole episode later. Paget spent the rest of the meal ignoring Max and flirting with Earl Milton, who had no idea what was happening. Either no one had ever flirted with Earl before, so he didn't recognize what she was doing, or she was a total failure at it, despite the wine coursing through her veins. It was depressing. Finally, the meal ended with the men going to the library for drinks and the ladies retiring to the parlor for gossip. Paget mingled with the people that she hadn't seen in the year that she had been widowed. Everyone was polite, but Paget knew that she was off their radar. They really didn't want to associate with her. However, she was the aunt of the bride, so they did what was necessary. Paget caught up on the news of people that she no longer had anything in common with. So, Max Ramsley, pretending he was homeless. I don't know what I did to deserve that, Judith murmured in her ear. Paget sighed. There was no way to win that particular argument. She chose to change the subject instead. Trisha is looking really well. I'm sure she'll make a beautiful bride tomorrow. He's purported to be quite a catch, her mother remarked, undeterred from her original comments on Max. I'm surprised you managed to get him to attend. Charles has been trying to get Ramsley Farmer to switch to become clients to the law firm for some time. This could be quite a feather in his cap. Or he could just focus on his daughter's wedding rather than making this a business weekend, Paget replied sweetly, taking another sip of wine. Socializing is business, Judith slid her sharp look. Where did you meet him, anyways? You wouldn't believe me, Paget said a little bitterly. For a moment she wished Adam had never introduced her to Max. With a delicate sniff, Judith let Paget know what she thought of her answer. Well, it's certainly good of him to come. He's my date, Mom, Paget replied dryly. Don't call me Mom. It's so gauche. Judith gave a delicate shudder. There really was no talking to her. Did I tell you that I've decided to run for mayor? Why would you do a silly thing like that? Her mother looked at her with confusion. Politics is a male sport. Women who enter that fray are seen as unfilled or as domineering. I shouldn't like people to think of you that way. The mayor has some policies I can't agree with, Paget said firmly. I've decided to try to make a difference in the city, to change things for the better. Really, darling, leave it to the men. It gives them something to do. Her mother smiled as she greeted Mrs. Milton. Betty, you remember Paget. Of course. She brought Max Ramsley. What a coup. I always knew you would land on your feet. Mrs. Milton smiled, but it didn't reach her eyes. And if things don't work out, you just let me know. Earl is currently available, but he might get snatched up as soon as Mercy Whitrow is back in town. Paget highly doubted Mercy was that desperate, but what did she know? Mercy could be on the hunt for her husband number four by now. Paget offered an insincere smile in return. Mrs. Milton, it's so nice to see you. My daughter Sally has finished her schooling. She couldn't be here tonight, but she'll be here tomorrow. Mrs. Milton gasped as though an idea had just occurred to her. You should introduce Max to her. Why would I do that? Paget asked, all innocent. She could see Mrs. Milton's angle. Two single children and a Ramsley was a catch. Mrs. Milton tittered. I'm sure she's just his style. She's turned into a beauty. Paget remembered Sally, and she had looks. They were about the only thing going for her. She also had an error in her head. If Tiffany was right, the plastic surgery had catapulted the girl into every housewife's guard-the-husband from her list. She was also only twenty-four. I wasn't aware that you knew, Max, Paget said sweetly. He never mentioned. Excuse me? Mrs. Milton was confused. Well, if you know his style, then you must know him. I'm sure you can shove Sally at him without my help. Paget smiled in satisfaction over the barb as she took a sip from her wine glass. Mrs. Milton's false smile disappeared very quickly. 
I know you've come down in the world, but there's no reason to be rude. I believe my daughter is just staking her claim, Padgett's mother chimed in coolly. To get people thinking that her daughter was dating Max would put her one above them. Mrs. Milton gave an ill-mannered humph. Men can be fickle, as Paget here knows. The smile left Paget's mouth. Max isn't. She hoped she was telling the truth. She really didn't know. Although why she should care if he was faithful or not was beyond her since she was mad at him. His track record certainly didn't help him as he had been a serious player when he was younger. We'll see. With that parting shot, Mrs. Milton made her way to another group of people to socialize with. Paget raised her wine glass for another drink and turned to her mother. Thank you for defending me. Oh, I wasn't, Judith remarked as she looked over the crowd. I was just making sure that she remembers that it's our connection to the Ramsleys, not hers or anyone else's. She should have known, Paget thought. There really wasn't one maternal bone in her mother's body. The groups rejoined, and everyone went out onto the terrace as more arrivals slowly filled out the numbers. Oars de herbs and champagne flowed. It was a long night of socializing, and Paget was bone-tired after keeping face to previous sorority sisters, old friends, and old acquaintances. She hated how they looked down on her and called her ambitions quaint. She hated it more that they all seemed surprised that Max Ramsley was there by her side for most of the night, both of them pretending in strained silence to be a couple. It was as if no one thought she was good enough for him. By the time the evening was drawing to a close, Paget felt all of two feet tall. She wondered why she had even come. Perhaps all she was good for was Earl Milton. What a depressing thought. Paget managed to locate Tiffany while Max was bogged down with Charles hounding him for a day to discuss changing law firms to represent the Ramsley's empire. "'What a wonderful evening, Tiffany. You must be so pleased,' Paget automatically complimented her sister. "'It went well enough. I wish the caterers had been better, but it's hard to get good service these days.' Tiffany made the usual noises, even though she knew it had all gone off without a hitch. Paget nodded as though she agreed with what Tiffany had said. The catering job had been superb, in her opinion, but to say otherwise would be to contradict her sister, which just shouldn't be done. It was easier this way. "'What rooms did you put Max and I in? I should have asked sooner, but with being late for dinner—' "'The Rosewood Room,' Tiffany replied. Paget waited, but Tiffany didn't add to her reply. "'And?' "'And what? You're both in the Rosewood Room,' Tiffany nodded and gave a wave to a couple who were departing. Together? Since when are you in a liberal view? Paget reminded herself that no one had actually expected her to bring a date. However, she really did not want to share a room with Max right now. Tiffany sighed and explained her reasoning like Paget was a little slow. You've been a married woman. It's not like there's your virtue to protect. Even Mother didn't object. All the other rooms are full, so unless he wants a sofa... The rosewood will be fine. Thank you, Tiffany. Paget said a little stiffly. She joined Max and Charles, hooking an arm through Max's. I am simply fatigued. You don't mind, do you, Charles? Charles, being polite, could not refuse her taking Max from him. Paget steered both of them inside and promptly dropped his arm before heading up the stairs. Thank you for rescuing me, Max said carefully. Charles is harmless, Paget replied sarcastically. He may be harmless, but he certainly is tenacious. Mother thinks it would be a feather in his cap if he could get Ramsley Pharma as a client. Paget turned right at the top of the staircase. I tried to tell him I was no longer with the company. Max was cautious to keep his voice neutral. Paget was talking to him, and he didn't want to ruin it. He wouldn't take no for an answer. What did you do? Paget inquired. She supposed the wine could be to blame for her asking. She certainly wasn't curious. At least, that's what she told herself. I gave him Michael's number. It took Paget a moment to place the name. Your oldest brother? Max smiled, then abruptly sobered. Yep, maybe he'll get mad enough to call me. Paget felt a kinship with this Michael that she had never met. They were both mad at Max. They had that in common. She wondered if he was single. Maybe she should give him a call, and they could both give Max the silent treatment together. Only, she wasn't doing very good at the silent treatment, since she was still talking to him. I should warn you, 
Tiffany put us together for accommodations, Paget said as she opened the door to the bedroom. You can have the floor. I'm good with the floor, Max said easily. He was surprised that Paget was going to allow him to sleep in the same room. He supposed it was all part of her saving face in front of her family. Well, as long as it kept him close to her, he wasn't going to complain. He had this weekend to figure out a way to get her to forgive him and to win her back. Paget checked on her dresses for the rest of the weekend. She knew it was silly, but she needed to make sure that they had been hung right so they wouldn't wrinkle. Little things like this were important. Tomorrow was just as much about how everyone else looked as the bride looked. The gift she had gotten for Trisha and Jordan was still wrapped perfectly and sitting on the side dresser. It wasn't much, but hopefully the bride would like it. It was a canvas painting by the up-and-coming artist that Paget knew was going to go places. Dix's art was amazing, and some day Paget hoped this piece would be worth much more than what she had paid for it. It was an investment of sorts. Max offered her the washroom first, and Paget grabbed her nightwear. It was nothing more than a dark tee with her cut-off shorts. She hadn't expected to share a room, and so had opted for comfortable. Washing away her makeup, she stared at her reflection in the mirror. What was she going to do? She was in love with a man who didn't always tell her the truth. She wondered if she could get her dad to do a background check on Max, to see if he was telling her everything. The problem was, as much as she loved him and as much as he might promise to tell her everything from now on, she wasn't sure she could trust him. Look where trust had gotten her with Gary. The problem was her heart still ached for him. Even now, she just wanted to go into the bedroom and let him hug her, talk to her with his sexy voice, tell her it was all going to be all right. Paget groaned. She sure could pick men. She left the washroom and let Max have his turn. While he was there, she threw a pillow on the floor and followed it with the extra bed cover. He was the homeless one. She was sure he'd slept in work circumstances. Paget settled herself into bed and shut off the light. She wondered how she was going to get any sleep. She listened as Max got settled on the floor. Thanks for the blanket and pillow, he said. I promise I'm going to make this up to you. Paget sighed. That's the problem, Max. I don't want you to make things up to me. I wish you'd just been honest in the first place. Here's the honest truth, Max sighed in frustration. I want to watch sunsets and sunrises with you. I want to hold your hand every day I get a chance to. I want to take long walks through the autumn leaves with you and have snowball fights with you in the winter. I want to explore every inch of your body. I want to have kids with you. I want to marry you some day soon and watch the most amazing, gorgeous, talented woman I know come up the aisle to me. I want to surprise you with gifts and romantic evenings. I might even swallow my pride and get my brother Michael to teach me how to write some poetry for you, because you deserve poetry. I'm not going to sing for you. I'm an awful singer, and I know you wouldn't want to hear dogs howl and babies cry. I want to take you to the beach. I want to take you to the Yankees game. I want to grow old with you and end up in some little retirement community in Florida, discussing how badly our dentures fit and if the grass was cut low enough or whether we should buy some of those plastic long flamingo ornament things. That's what's honest, Paget. Paget bit her lip. She wanted all of those things, too. She wiped away a tear and made a decision. Maybe it was all the wine she drank tonight. She might regret it, or it might be the best one of her life. Paget got out of bed and grabbed Max's blanket. She threw it back on the bed. Hey! Max sat up and gave her the opportunity to grab his pillow and throw it back on the bed as well. Alarmed, he scrambled to his feet. Paget, honey, please, I'd like to stay. Don't throw me out. If you ever, ever lie to me or withhold the truth from me again, we are done. Do you understand? Paget stated in a wobbly voice, poking him in the chest with a finger for emphasis. Yes, totally, I, I promise. Max was quick to respond. Unless you mess it up. We are getting the plastic flamingos, she said as she poked him again. Absolutely, anything you want, he was quick to promise. Okay, she sniffed. She turned on her heel and got back into bed. Um, Paget? Max asked cautiously. He wasn't sure what to do since she had confiscated his bedding. You can sleep in the bed, but you have to stay on your side. I'm still mad, she fluffed her pillow then punched it. And you're going to stop sleeping on the street. Either you get a place of your own, or you sleep on my couch, so I don't have to worry about you all the time. Okay. Max gingerly got in the bed, making sure not to cross into her territory. He was thankful that this meant that she might be taking him back, and he had no intentions of screwing it up. Anything else you'd like? I'll let you know when I think of it. She sniffled again and wiped away a tear. 
She turned over so that he was to her back and hugged her pillow. Back rub, foot massage, whatever you want, he offered. Paget had a watery life. He might regret that offer when we're old and I've got corns and bunions. I promise I will rub your bunions, darling, Max said. Paget turned back to him. How about just a hug for now? That I can definitely do. Max sidled closer and pulled her into his arms, gently holding her. Paget snuggled close and listened to his comforting heartbeat. She was still mad, she told herself, as she drifted off to sleep. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of The Reverse Cinderella. Also, please click the bell for notifications so that you don't miss any videos. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.